was that? And we're back. <laughs> How was that? Was, I think it was good, man. See, I gotta ask, I gotta ask Jake, man, because he really does like television production and stuff like that, like for real, for real. So yeah, it was it, good. It, it was good. cool. Yeah, it was cool. All right, man. Well, um, welcome back. This is the Plugged In Show. I'm your host, David D. Making Moves, and I'm here with a distinguished guest, one of Indianapolis' finest, finest cameramen doing directing work, video work. Not even just here in Indiana, but um, I'm pretty sure you've taken this show on the road. You a few times, Across for sure. the country. Yeah, yeah. Across the country. Mr. Jake Huber. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. We got to I need that applause kind button. Words, I need, yeah, do a little the, applause. Yeah, line up button hold right your there. applause. Hold your applause. But what's going on, bro? Nothing much, man. Just out here surviving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got I mean, the wipes on deck. If you can see it in the wide shot right there. Right, right. We got to cut to the other. We're side. making sure we're doing this as clean and safe as possible. Clean and safe as possible. We are in the midst of a, uh, a epidemic or sure. a pandemic. Both. All sorts of demics. A lot of, a lot of demics. Um, but I think the most important thing is that people stay in tune with their academics and make sure you're educating yourself with good quality media content, like the Plugged In Show here sure. today with my guest, Jay. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about everything, man. I wanna talk about, first of all, like what's actually going on in the real world right now. We can't act like for sure, like nothing going on. So um, first, I wanna let the people know who you are and what you do, and then we will dialogue. Cool. Well, like you said, I'm Jake Huber. I'm a local here from Indianapolis. Um, I direct music videos in town. I work in the film industry. Uh, I do a lot of camera operating. I'm in the camera department mostly, but uh, I try to get my hands in all sorts of things, whether it's directing, producing, or just being, you know, behind the whole camera department side of things. Dope, dope, dope. And I think the dopest thing about everything that you said is um, you really went in depth with the camera work, like taking it to, I, when I say in depth, or just taking it to a different level, just kind of being able to be well versed at not only um, producing, but directing as well. How long have you been into, uh, I guess, video work? Like, um, I don't know if you do photography as for well. For sure. Um, I went to school for photography, so I've been kind of in it for a while now, probably since like high school. Mm -hmm. But when I started like getting into video work, I would say within the last, six years mm. uh, as soon as I got out of college have you are you from Indianapolis I am yeah okay born and raised out born here. and raised okay 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 yep. okay um, what school did you go to I went to North Central North Central yeah all right all right all right so you started off with photography and then you changed lanes and got into video what what yeah. prompted that I, change? I pretty much just like got into art in high school really got deep into photography, got into painting, kind of drawing like that. And then I transferred over to IU mm -hmm. and uh, I was two and a half years into art school. And um, when I was out and about, I would always document, you know, my friends and family just with video, photos, stuff like that. Kind of self-taught myself a lot of video stuff. Um, and the, the famous story behind it all is like, I was getting my wisdom teeth out and they put me under for it because my whole situation was pretty fucked up and they're like asked me all these questions while putting me under and they're like hey what do you go to school for and i was like oh, i go to art school and there's like three you know medical workers on top of me and they're just like laughing at me and i was like oh shit and then i remember i went put under and i woke up and i was like i mean i gotta get a second major you know and you right know? and get so, that art yeah so i went and i double majored and in telecommunications. Te okay, yeah. okay, so you, so do you have experience in front of the camera too? No, I don't really. Okay, okay, yeah. so when you studied telecommunications, it was still the production It was mostly like, yeah, it. like design and production behind television shows and then also like just filming them. Okay, so what are you typically like finding yourself working on when it comes to um, like video production? You do like videos? Uh, yeah, for sure. So full time I work in reality TV. So I'm a camera operator. Mm -hmm. I do like assistant camera work, um, anything that's like media related with building the cameras, changing lenses, cleaning cameras, backing up footage and shooting the show. That's all me. 
So what kind of like reality TV? You talking about like love and hip hop? Or you Man, talking about I like, wish. Okay. No, I, have, I have a lot of homies that work on like all those love and hip hop shows. Okay. But uh, okay. I, I work in like home renovation, like okay. boring stuff that, you know. Well, no, I mean, this stuff gets watched. Like oh, I, watch sure. a lot, I watch a lot of home improvement shows yeah. when I'm at the gym. Sometimes I'm at the, at the house kicking it. It's always on at the gym or it's the hospital. Always on. At the gym. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so you the man good. behind the camera on one on are you doing that here in Indiana? I'm doing Indiana? that here. Right in Fountain Square. What? Yeah, it's a show called Good Bones on HGTV. Mm-hmm. Um we're on season five now. So Have uh, you been with the show like the whole time? The whole time. Since twenty fifteen. Yeah. Damn. Okay, so all right, so first of all, it I mean, even though um you have, I know you got experience doing like other types of videos. Like you already shooting for like a a, te- a show that's being aired on national television sure. and it's being filmed here in Indiana. Yeah. I didn't think that a lot of things were being filmed in Indiana besides like it's cool. professional well, sports games. For sure. When you I watch it, that, it's kind of cool like, seeing like, you know, different like familiar city skates and stuff. You're mm-hmm. like, wow, this is like actually happening here. Oh, man, that's yeah, it's oh, getting a lot of love. Okay, so are you like really into like construction or home improvement, or uh, that's just where you're? I'm just I'm just been around it for so long that I, I'm familiar with it. I really mm-hmm. like it a lot. I'm trying to buy a house right now. Okay. I'm, I'm so so I'm like deep into it. I know a lot of things about the whole process of like starting a house from the studs all the way to completed project. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just familiar process that I've been following for the past couple of years. So so now. While we're on the subject of something that's just kind of like part of like <laughs> real life living, sure. or, you know, your regularly more like your regularly scheduled programming, like all right, buying a house, uh, people graduated from school, mm-hmm. uh, sporting events, and and different things that was going on, whether it's like live entertainment or sports betting, whatever. Like a lot of things have been really like halted and affected on top of the most important thing, which is like American lives or human sure. lives, period, sure. being affected yeah. by the virus. So um, entertainment or home improvement, which one of those is considered essential business? It's and, definitely entertainment. Like okay. anything media related right okay. now, up to this moment that we're talking right now is deemed essential. So that could be a TV show, you can work for the news, you can work for local publication. Mm. It's all deemed essential. This podcast, stuff like that, you know. Right now, all these things are essential for viewers at home to stay sane and keep up to date with the world. So, I mean, you obviously, you, you we're here today. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, just to kind of gauge where your mind is, bro. Cause I was just like connected with different people to just see where their mind's at mm-hmm. about the Corona uh, COVID situation. So what's, what's your thoughts on it? And uh, or do you, are you like taking like big precautions or anything like that to make sure that you're staying safe? Like what are you doing? Big picture, I think like shit's gonna get fucked for sure. Like mm-hmm. uh, big cities are just like multiplying day by day, but um, you take the proper precautions and stuff like that which i know like being outside of your home is not proper precaution right now but right. indiana is pretty low number right now but just washing those hands keeping up that vitamin c just being smart stop touching your face so much there's right. all these little things that are just like i mean i'm smiling man but it's really for sure. hard to be like yeah uh, funny or you know but I, I, I think also at a time like this like to your point entertainment being somewhat like essential it's important for us to just try to find the light and try to uh, stay sane and keep moving forward um, producing content producing sure. quality content I feel like it's definitely like something that's essential to keep people moving forward because I mean, what are you doing at home? You you playing video games? You watching Netflix? Like a little bit. I'm I'm dabbling. I'm dabbling with a little bit of everything, but I think uh, because I'm into marketing Mm -hmm. and a lot of my business is digital. um, I don't know, man. It's like it affects people differently, right? So I think on one side of the spectrum, it's hit people like okay, yo, I'm ready to really invest into my business yeah. and get things going. But then on the flip side, that was one man's band, band right there. But uh, on the flip side of that, it's like got a lot of people like, hold on, you know, I want to yeah. uh, be conservative and save everything that I have right now. This isn't the best time for me to invest into 
um, some marketing, whether it's helpful advertising website or whatever. So I don't know, I, I'm seeing both sides of it, um, but having my hands in multiple things like yourself, just creating quality content, podcasting is my thing. So I feel like this is a great time to double down because I feel like radio, uh, music, it's a great time to be an artist or content creator because uh, the internet is still up. And I hope that the internet don't go down or anything like that. I was talking to him a little bit earlier and uh, he had um, explained to us some different concepts and some other different things that's in the work in the background. We got a different special coming for him later, but uh, man, it's a lot of conspiracy theories going on yeah. that's really crazy. Day by day, I'm learning something new or reading something like a conspiracy theory, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whether it's fake news or real news, who, who knows, but just to uh, stay in tune with what we got going on over here, man, I wanna- Stay tuned for episode two. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna go, it's gonna go deeper, it's yeah. gonna go deeper. But that's a different <laughs> show, that's a different show. But with with you, Jake, um, you took some what I would call like um, leaps of faith, or you. I feel like you had to like you turned the corner in your video production career, and this is just from the research that I was doing. You you let me know if I'm right or wrong, but. When you decided to take um, an artist that you were working with out to Fort Wayne, yeah, yeah, for and, sure, and uh, get them on TV, yeah, like what happened with that whole situation? So, long story short, there's a band I really liked called Hoops out of Bloomington, mm-hmm. and we wanted to film in a public access TV station. So I found the most like the cuttiest, grimiest one ever in Greenwood, but they were like super like. Uh, I would say just conservative and stuff like that, and they okay. and they did research on the band, and we had everything lined up, everything like pretty much paid for, um, good to go. But they did research on the band and saw that uh, they did they're playing a benefit show for things that didn't like correspond to their beliefs, so they canceled last minute. So mm. I had to find another public access TV station. So I went to Fort Wayne because they have um, a really like. A nice one, pretty much, and you can shoot there for free if you are a citizen of Fort Wayne. So I had to go like 100% out of my way and find like a citizen of Fort Wayne, just find someone on Craigslist and be like, hey, can I throw you some bones to say that you live here and like you can book this spot? So that was like a crazy, that was one of my like crazier, like last minute, like total meltdown of a shoot, like, mm-hmm. you know, 24 hour turnaround kind of stuff. But you made it happen, though. Yeah, like, we made it happen, for sure. Yeah. So, how, all right, so, I mean, just to jump into the details just a little bit, how did you find somebody, like, real quick out there in Fort Wayne? Did you yeah. have some family out there or something? You just paid somebody? Like, that was back that? when there was, like, misconnections on Craigslist. So I went, like, I went, like, really deep into it. And I just found, like, the shadiest person I could find on Craigslist. Yeah, pretend, like, yeah I was like, hey, listen, here's 100 bucks. Like, just sign this waiver and, like, book this space for me. And so cool. that's what happened. Yeah. So, all right, that happens, and this at this time you're focused more on music videos, though, right? For sure, yeah. And then uh, you doing a lot of music videos today still? Yeah, I mean, with everything going on right now, like things are at a pause, mm-hmm. but um, still trying to knock at least like ten to fifteen out a year, trying to like build on like diversifying the artists I work with. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been really narrowing down on artists I really like, and this kind of like making sure they get like two or three videos out that can really make them stand out amongst the crowd here, which is very small one, but um, I just think it's, I mean, it's just a mutual thing. I have like a lot of faith in these people and they have faith in me, so. So you bring up a real good point I I wanna ask you about. What do you feel like, uh, you know, with the market, being how it is out here, the music market, I think that we talk about specifically, what do you think are some elements that makes a, a video or any type of production really stand out in the Indianapolis market? Um, I love video production, whether it's a super run and gun, one man band kind of stuff, or if it's like super well done, multiple people in a crew. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to the end of the day, um, channel placement is like the big thing. If you, you can spend 
couple hundred dollars on a video, but get it on a national channel with millions of okay. subscribers. And that's when you get exposed to audiences that you would never touch unless you toured on like a national level. Interesting. That's, that's very interesting that you say that. So even though you work behind the camera, you may be directing a video, um, it's a it's a priority or something that you keep in mind as far as just like the, the placement and the sure. distribution of yep. the art after it gets created. Okay, because I, I think that that's interesting because a lot of people don't think about that at all. Mm -hmm. It could be the people that are directing the video. It could be the artist in the video. It could be the artist manager yep. that was with the artist while he was shooting the video. I found that um, at least as people are on the come up and there's always lessons to be learned that that's something that a lot of people don't consider like all right after we do this short film or music video like what are we going to do mm -hmm. with the content is that something that um you have experience in, in doing um now? for sure yeah I've, I've done a lot of like the a &R side of stuff and I've, okay. I've, I've landed premieres on like channels like elevator no jumper trash mm -hmm. stuff like that um but nothing like super high end you know um but it's something that i wish i was super plugged into um, right but i do think that's super important because like a lot of artists especially like in the hip-hop world will want to do like you know a three-part short film music video kind of deal mm -hmm. and it's just like oh i'm dropping you know a couple thousand dollars to make this video and then i'm going to put it on my own channel that has under 100 subscribers right, 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 um, right, right. which is like it's cool that you have the proof that you did this thing but like you really want to get it to an audience which like is critical extremely hard and, and it's hard and it's hard because i think on one side of it you can just kind of uh pay you yep. know and, and get stuff padded or boosted or something like that but then on the other side of it it's very important that you have the relationships yep. and the people that you can call up um, to get an article written about an artist or get a placement in a certain publication. So, no, that's, I think that that's super important. Um, how, like, when you choose the artists that you decide to work with, are you working mainly with, like, local artists or are you traveling for work? Um, and I'm talking um, real quick, one, one more time, in regards to music videos mm -hmm. and then with all of the video projects that for you're sure. doing. Um, I'm pretty much local at okay. this point. Um, I've had some artists from out of town reach out to me and some that I, I have done videos for. Um, I would say recently I did one for uh, this guy with Little Toe from South Florida. Yeah, not so uh, South Florida. TikTok. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, TikTok yeah, yeah, video. yeah, I've seen that. I've the seen South that. Florida is like a scene I'd, I'd love to like definitely infiltrate. Mm -hmm. Like some of my favorite hip hop artists are from South Florida, so especially the Palm Beach area and stuff okay. like that. So. I love that kind of stuff. And so that weather. that's cool. Um, but I definitely like love supporting the homies that are here and like giving them the same quality visuals. What are some of the artists here that you've uh, done video work for? Um, I could just start naming them off. So I mean, I've done stuff for Draco McCoy, Baby Ebony, Mula Khan, Sirius Black. Um, just did one for John Stamps. Uh, and so many, I'm trying to think, Poindexter. Mm -hmm. um, me and him have stuff coming up later this year, which I'm excited for. Um, yeah, he got some dope, he always had dope videos. I'm trying to think who else. There's so many people, I'm kind of drawing blanks right now, but. I saw it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've, you know, I've dabbled in like singer-songwriter stuff. So I've done like uh, Kevin Crowder, Heaven Honey, um, stuff like that. But especially when it comes to hip hop stuff, I've definitely done a good amount of people mm -hmm. in town when it comes to like Indianapolis Fountain Square scene. No, nah, okay. No, nah, I think that's one thing that um, we want to make sure that we keep a spotlight on mm -hmm. on this show. Uh, just kind of being uh, hyper focused on what's going on locally and not only the artists that are around doing music and creating locally, but the people that are capturing these artists because um, I'm a marketer, but I definitely understand how important it is on one side for the artist to be able to create the music or do what they're doing. Yeah. But the person that has the eye to capture it, you know, produce, and it's starting all the way kind of with the storyboarding of whatever they have going on and kind of make that vision come to life, like 
this stuff is so critical. Like, it's so important. So, uh, and I've, I've seen your work, man. Like, the Hail Mary video is, like, crazy. Thank you, man. So, I got a question for you. Yeah. Because a lot of people feel like to do videos and things like that on that level, where are you even getting the equipment from in Indianapolis? You know, what is it like? You have to have a budget of like 15, 10, dollars $15,000. Like you usually see these type of things being done in the major cities. Indianapolis is a major city. See, this is what I'm talking about. You usually see these things done like in the bigger cities, but like, how are you able to put together video production sets like this? Like, are you rich? Are you, you got a rich cousin? Balling, like, what's balling. yeah, what's going on, man? Like, how are you able to put this, put these, uh, these works of art together? In a in a normal world, these videos would be in that margin that you just said. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of these people in town are working professionals who uh, are doing jobs that are just like you know, quote unquote boring, um, the standard routine kind of stuff, like stuff they're not getting like any fulfillment out of. So when I pitch them, hey, let's do a John Stance video where it's like a drunken white trash, biker bar, rodeo, mechanical bull kind of thing. Everybody's like, all right, you know, I can do like a half day's work on there. I can, you know, I can bring my gear with me okay. and stuff like that. And so it's a mostly a trade of services, exchange of trust, friendship thing. Mm, okay okay yeah no that that makes sense that makes sense because that means that again um, if you are starting to see some some common threads of wisdom that are coming up in these shows that we've been doing like networking and being able to connect with people and build solid relationships where you're able to trade and barter on services right. on uh, social current whatever whatever it is like man to get people to be down and do a project like this and come together like that's dope because yeah the first thing i was thinking i'm like all right what a budget for a video like this is like 20k so i don't know if like yeah. john just Something, took a little yeah, bit off the yeah just took out, the deal just took out a little loan <laughs> yeah no so all right man but you i, I, to make I make sure that the artists i work with uh just show up and they work and mm -hmm. they are completely taken care of and mm -hmm. if i do ask for any money it's to handle something that's like premiere related or like feeding my crew mm -hmm. stuff like that something that is very like minute and like all the numbers that are being thrown around in the shoots so um i'm gonna come back around to the music videos sure. but what's the name of this uh tv show uh Again? good bones good bones yeah good bones and how did you actually get like into that i just i mean the story is pretty boring. I just applied to it and I got it. Um, just fresh out of college. I, every job has an entry level position. Mm -hmm. And so I just applied to be a production assistant and- And it worked out. And it worked out, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So do you see yourself continuing to um, build like a career in television production or is the ultimate goal to venture off as a entrepreneur, solopreneur, as sure. a director? Um, I'm happy where I'm at right now. If you know, and like when if things get to the point where like I'm blessed with people reaching out to me and wanting to do stuff like this that can afford it, I mean that's great, and I'll I'll do it for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just have fun doing this. I like putting my friends on the map because even though the artists are getting put up with like great visuals, like the people shooting it or the people editing it, doing the lighting, everybody can use this footage to help them get jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 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 And if people want to inquire about your services uh, or work with you, Jake, where should they, first of all, it's, so you, it's not $10,000 to work with you. Uh, it, it all depends. It, so, <laughs> so, so when it comes to like what I'm doing, I reach out to who I want to work with. That's, mm -hmm. When you see me doing something and you see me active, it's because I have a, a treatment and I know what artists I want to use it for. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that doesn't mean that I'm not into finding new artists. And okay. So I can hear new artists, big. Like, oh wow, I can. I have this idea. This works perfectly with this song. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Um, 
it's not really a numbers thing for me. Um, if, I mean, if you have like crazy numbers you want to throw at me, great, we'll make it happen. But it's, I have fun. These are all just projects with my friends I have fun with and I have these treatments in my head or these artists and I come up with a treatment mm -hmm. and, and we just make it happen. And it's just something I do for fun for now. Okay, okay. So if somebody wants to work with you, Jake, where, how should they go about getting in touch with you? I would just hit me up on Instagram. Um, IG. When you have any questions about video stuff, I'm always responsive. Um, whether you're like, oh, I want to do a video, like I want, I want a DeLorean, I want a Lamborghini for my video. What do I do? Like, I'm always happy to help answer questions, stuff like that. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna like blow people off. I like helping people figure out stuff so they can like actually afford it on their own. And then like their next step would be like finding someone to shoot it and produce it, stuff like that. But I like helping people do stuff because doing this kind of stuff is like, it's a headache for sure. It's a crazy headache. Yeah. Especially if nobody teaches you the headache side of it. They may sure. teach you, you know, the equipment and everything that you yeah. but the the energy and the I guess like the people management aspect that goes into keeping a production. Yeah. I I salute you, bro. <laughs> I, appreciate I salute you. you. Man. I salute yeah. you. But no, let um I want you to let the people know uh, what your IG is For because sure. I feel like some people are gonna reach out to try to get in contact cool. with you after this. And I mean, you need to teach a course. Bro. Like, <laughs> if you got this type of experience, I think people are dying to get this information. Right so yeah. you get them, yo. Um, just hit me up on Instagram. It's uh, at underscore my full name, Jake Huber, H U B E R, and then underscore after that. And hit me up whenever you want. And check out Jake's latest masterpiece. It's a video, John Stamps, Hail Mary. Just type that in on YouTube. Check that out. This has been the Plug In Show. Jake, I appreciate you coming out appreciate in you, the man. midst of everything that's going on. Um, everybody uh, that uh, we got to select you in the studio, <laughs> but everybody is practicing yeah, social. It. Yeah, yeah, everybody practicing social distance, and I appreciate everybody for coming together to make this show happen. Um, and we will be in touch with y'all next week, very soon. We got to stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. You got to watch yeah. the next episode day to see day. if the show's still yeah. going. <laughs> so uh, we'll be in touch with y'all. All right, peace. You ain't got to tell me when it's time to go. Because I'm going to only get it jumping like Geronimo. I'm all alone, see me, myself, and I got common goals. I'm on a roll and you're the nap and got me comatose. So I suppose I'll hit a label like a month or so. And try to get a book and agent for these fucking shows. Because I've been sleeping on the business side of fucking shows. So now I'm heading to the hills trying to 